Chuck McCoy is a broadcasting veteran who has spent his entire adult life in the radio broadcasting business. From the beginnings as an on-air personality, with his last on-air position being at the world-famous 1050 Chum, Chuck was a founding director for Factor in 1981, chairman of the Radio Star Maker Board from 2005 to 2010, member of several CAB CRTC radio committees, member of the board of BBM and BBM radio executive committees. His most recent role was as Vice President General Manager of Toronto's largest radio cluster at Rogers, where he stepped down in 2012 to become an independent media consultant. Chuck was also a Canadian Music Industry Hall of Fame inductee in 2008. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Chuck McCoy. introduction was longer than Tom's speech. Um, I'm really honored to uh, have the pleasure to introduce my friend Paul Ski to you and uh, announce him as the latest recipient of the Alan Waters Lifetime Achievement Award and the newest inductee in the Canadian Broadcasting Industry Hall of Fame. There's a famous story that broadcasters use a lot when People ask them, how did you start in a business? And usually, you know, they say, well, it all started at a 1,000 watt radio station in a very small town. And, and uh, in Paul Ski's case, that's the truth. He started at a 1,000 watt radio station in Southern Ontario, St. Thomas, CHLO. And that's where I first met Paul. We were two teenage disc jockeys sort of running rampant through the L London, St. Thomas markets. Um, Paul himself actually began his broadcast career before I did. Um, I, he looks a lot younger than I do, but he did start uh, before me. And this was a, a long time ago. Thank you. <laughs> I was worried there for a minute. You weren't going to come in. Uh, it, well, this was back in the day when the radio station we worked at, CHLO, it was owned by one person. Like, no cable companies or wireless companies. It was one guy owned this station. And if you're under the age of 40, I know that sounds weird, but this one guy owned the station, and that's the only station he owned. There was no consolidation or centralization. He owned one radio station, but the real kicker is his office was actually in the station where we worked. Like I said, it was a long time ago. Paul has been a DJ. I worked with him as a DJ. He's been a program director, general manager. He's been an industry executive. He was the president of CHUM. To my benefit, he was the CEO of Rogers my last three years at Rogers and he was my boss. But most important, Paul Ski has been one of my longest and dearest friends. Let's have a look and see what some other people might have to say. To I met Paul Ski back when we were both rather undisciplined teenage disc jockeys. Well, I was envious because he had an afternoon shift and I had an evening shift. He was a young, bright, a clever program director. He knew that radio had two customers, the listener and the advertiser. He survived because he has a passion for the business. He cares about audiences. He's disciplined about research. He instills loyalty, fear, but loyalty as well. He's a great content guy, but more than that, he's a great business guy. In the last three years, CHFI has become an absolute juggernaut powerhouse. Name a descriptor, and CHFI is that. Real broadcaster, dedicated, knows how important content is in, in the radio industry. He knows this is a business, and he knows what it takes to put those pieces together and how to make it into a profitable business. He's very supportive in ensuring we have the tools we need to hire the best talent, to program the way we need to program to win, and that's uh, admirable. 
is very intense in terms of what he decides and how he decides it and uh, how long he takes to decide it. Paul is a relatively young guy. You're welcome, Paul. Um, but adds a real class and leadership to the industry that is rare right now uh, to find. It's easy in our business, especially these days, to, uh, to fight for the dollars. He fights for the content. As important as Paul's career and his friends and his colleagues are to him, there is nothing more important than Ryan, his son. My dad has lots of love in him. He's very funny. He um, makes me laugh every day I see him. He listens, which I, I really like, and he's very empathetic, and he's a hard worker. I spent 35 years at Chum, and to me, we always were part of a big family with my father leading the way, of course. And Paul Ski was a member of that family for a lot of years and did a lot of great things for Chum. Let me see, he's about 90 now, so his dream when he retires in 30 years, I think still is to own the radio station in St. Thomas. I don't think Paul will ever, ever get away from this business. He's a superstar in, uh, in radio and it's a fitting that he should now be a Hall of Famer. Paul's really dedicated his life to broadcasting in Canada. He's really been a lifer as far as the Canadian radio broadcast industry is concerned and very deserving of this award. You know, I, I'd say this industry owes you for your selfless service, but, you know, I've seen your salary. I know how well you appreciate wine, and so it would be no surprise that you would be inducted into the Canadian Wine Hall of Fame. It's not that kind of Hall of Fame. Paul, you've had a great career. It's been great working with you. Congratulations, my friend. We're really proud to work for you, and you totally deserve this. Congratulations, Daddy. I love you. Wishing you all the best on this fantastic evening. I ask you to join me in congratulating Paul Ski, the newest inductee into the Canadian Industry Broadcast Hall of Fame and recipient of the Alan Waters Lifetime Achievement Award. Paul Ski. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Tom Cochran said, I hope I don't have to follow you. Um, have you, I know it's late, I know you're weary, I know your plans don't include me. But um, have, you ever, have you ever felt like you just stumbled into the greatest bar in the world? That's kind of how I feel tonight. Um, and, thank you. I, and I realized just the other day that this award is much better received pre-posthumously. <laughs> um, I want to thank Chuck for his kind words. As Chuck said, I started my career in St. Thomas many years ago with Chuck, and he finished his with me here in Toronto. He's been a good friend, extremely strong competitor, and a wonderful work colleague. Thanks to Jimmy Waters and the Waters family, this award is especially meaningful to me because it's the Alan Waters Award and I spent most of my radio career at Chum and learned a lot having worked with Jim. In fact, I spent over 30 years with Chum and have found a new home at Rogers over the past six years and I look forward to my next 24 years at Rogers. <laughs> um, over, thank you. over the years, I've been lucky enough to have other great bosses, supporters and mentors. Many of my former bosses wanted to be here tonight, but quite frankly, I didn't invite them. <laughs> but let me just comment on a few who I did invite and who are here tonight. Back in the 60s, Dave Marsden, then known as Dave Mickey, who's been mentioned earlier, noticed this young kid hanging around radio station CHLO in St. Thomas. Dave welcomed me to answer the hit line operate the board, and read the news. I experienced every aspect of radio at CHLO and getting a daily afternoon drive show when I was in grade 11. Thanks, Dave. J. Robert Wood came into the picture at CHLO as the PD and morning host from Winnipeg and shook the little radio station upside down 
into a top 40 format before he went to Chum. And Bob taught me a lot about program discipline and focus. Fred Sherad hired me to program Chum CFRA in Ottawa and joined the Chum group in the 70s and impacted my career more than anyone during the 15 years I worked with him. Fred is one of the most accomplished broadcasters and smartest business people I know. In 2003, Jay Switzer asked me to become executive vice president, later president of Chum Radio. It was a major move for me to take on this new role and be responsible for an entire company of radio stations. After Chum was bought by CTV, Tony Viner and Rail Merson approached me to join Rogers to head up the radio division. I had known both Tony and Rail for many years, and that made the move that much easier. It's always great to work with people you respect and admire. Thanks to Dave, Bob, Fred, Jay, Tony, and Rail, it means a lot to me that you're here tonight. Thank you. In the most recent years, Thanks. In the most recent years at Rogers, I've worked with Scott Moore and Keith Pelly. Both Scott and Keith are, much like me, content people first and foremost. Keith Pelly, president of Rogers Media, is my current boss and obviously my all-time favorite. <laughs> As mentioned, I've been fortunate to have had great people like those I've mentioned to help direct and guide my career. I'm especially pleased to have touched so many people in the broadcast industry over the years, back when that wasn't an HR violation. <laughs> if, if I have one regret, it's that my family, my mother, father, and brother, who have all passed away, couldn't be around to share in my recent success and this unbelievable acknowledgement of my career. My father first introduced me to music. He played the drums and xylophone and learned to play by mail. My mother sang a lot and had a beautiful voice, which I still hear from time to time. My brother sang in an all-black quartet. Well, except for him. <laughs> OK, I, I probably didn't need to clarify that. but. Uh, and they practiced at our house all the time. So my interest and love for all kinds of music was inherited and it's a great gift. Congratulations to my fellow honorees tonight, Ian Greenberg, Bruce Coburn, Tom Cochran, and Al Merritt. It's staggering for me to be in such rarefied company. My biggest supporter here tonight is my son, Ryan, who just a few weeks ago turned 11 teen. <laughs> Ryan has kept me grounded as to what's really important in life, and nothing can match the joy that being Ryan's dad has brought me. And I learned a few things on the video tonight, too. To have him here tonight and be awake this late is a special honor in many ways. And finally, let me say I'm halfway through. Um, no, not really. I know it's late. I know you're weary. Finally, let me say radio has been and I believe will continue to be the most resilient of all media. I've been fortunate to work with great teams over the years, including my senior management team at Rogers, most of them whom are here tonight. And just to my right here are, are most of my regional vice presidents who actually it's a bit of a surprise that they're, they're here tonight. So I'm, I'm, I'm just honored that you're here and also somewhat concerned that you may have expensed the trip. <laughs> um, so uh, thanks again to all of my team for always making me look much better and more competent than I really am. I'm so proud to share this evening and this award with all of you, but I'm hoping if you don't mind, I'll keep it myself for just a little while. Thank you again, I'm very honored. I don't know, I had to kind of hold it back a little bit there uh, tonight because when you're, when you're in a business that you love and when you're passionate about it, uh, honors like this are, are pretty special. What kind of music do you like, Ryan? I like hip hop. Really? Like who? Yeah. Um, I like Drake. I like Daft Punk. I like One Republic. I think the thing about Canadian Music Week is it brings together all factions of the entertainment music industry. Like to talk about music, talk about the radio industry, to talk about the jobs we have. Well, radio's been the most resilient of all media for almost a hundred years. And I think as long as we remember that we can remain resilient if we remain relevant, 
to, to our listeners and to our advertisers. And we have a unique capability because I don't think any other media establishes the psychological affiliation, the psychological bond that local personalities do in their communities.